What's up guys, welcome to another Realize Book Summary where we're gonna try to give you lots of value, lots of practical insights from the books I've been reading. And today's book is The One Thing by Gary Keller, which is a very good book, very, very good book actually, very practical. So let's dive right into it. So what exactly is the one thing I'm about to tell you, so hold up. What do you know about dominoes? Did you know that a domino can knock over another domino that is 50% larger than itself? This can keep going on ad infinitum if it's not stopped, if it is in the right conditions. Of course, the reason this happens is because of momentum. The momentum created from the first domino being knocked down. So what you need to do in life is you need to find out what your dominoes are. You need to find out where your first domino is and you need to hit that shit. You need to smash that first domino and knock over the next few dominoes and build some momentum. And it gets easier and easier. You get more power as you go along. The first domino is your one thing. Now, how do you find your one thing? You might be asking. Well, Gary talks about using the focus question. The focus question is a question that you have to repeatedly ask yourself throughout the day. You have to make it a habit to ask yourself the focus question because it is going to show you what the one thing is. Now the focus question goes like this, and I quote, what's the one thing you can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? Now let me repeat that. What is the one thing you can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? If you can understand that question, you can understand this book. If you can make that a habit, success itself is guaranteed. Always ask yourself the question. Find the domino and hit it. Smash it. Now let's look at some case studies. Let's look at Bill Gates. What was Bill Gates' one thing? Bill Gates' one thing is programming. When he started off, the thing that gave him the advantage was learning how to program when the language was still new, when people didn't know much about programming, it gave him a big head start. He kept practicing his coding and that led to the next big domino and he knocked that over, creating Microsoft and he keeps knocking over dominoes and that's what made him one of the most successful people in the world. Now for a more recent example, let's look at a famous YouTuber, PewDiePie, or however you say his name. What is that guy's one thing? Well, that guy's one thing is very simple. YouTube videos. He kept making YouTube videos consistently. All the time he persevered. He kept putting them out there of him playing those video games. Some people thought it was a stupid idea, but he kept doing it. He kept knocking it and one thing led to another. And now he's a millionaire. So what is your one thing? Now, A practical way of finding out what your one thing is, is by looking at other people that have done or are doing what you want to do. Success leaves clues. Don't be a fool and try to figure it all out yourself. We have a whole library of human knowledge out there. If you want to accomplish something, nine times out of ten, someone would have already done it before you. Figure out what they did. What was their routine? If you want to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, How often did he train? How did he train? What type of mindset did he have towards training? If you want to be like Serena Williams, how many hours did she practice? What type of weightlifting program does she do? Etc. Etc. Find out what your one thing is and you will be on your path. Alright, so let's jump over to the second biggest inside of the book, which is the 80-20 principle, also known as the Pareto principle. Now, to some of the viewers, I know that we've talked about this ad nauseum, but it is a very important point that comes up in many good books. So let's get into it. Now, the 80-20 principle pretty much says that a minority of your efforts are going to lead to a majority of your results. Now, what does this mean? It means that 20% of your customers usually account for 80% of your profits. 20% of your investments usually account for 80% of your returns. 20% of your habits usually result in 80% of your success. Life is not balanced. 
not everything weighs the same. So if you want to be successful, you need to be able to identify the key areas to focus on and to put most of your energy in those areas. Of course, some other things are going to lag behind, but it doesn't matter. The idea of a balanced life is a falsehood. That's something that Gary talks about. There is no such thing as a balanced, balanced life. So you need to be able to focus on what matters the most. When you apply for a job, you get a job description. But once you get into that job, you will very quickly realize that not everything is of equal importance. The person who's best able to do the most important things in the job gets a promotion. I've worked with people that were busy putting a lot of effort into the most mundane things all the time, always working really hard, keeping themselves busy, but they never, ever advanced in their position because they did not work in the key success indicator areas. They just did everything. If you do everything, you're doing nothing. So you have to be very careful with where you put your time. In my engineering exams, what I would do often was study past papers. And when you study these past papers, you quickly realize that there's a certain amount of topics that are recurring or that have a huge weighing in these exams. If you're able to focus on these areas, a lot of the times you don't even have to study the other material because of the 80-20 rule. You can study the core principles and pass with flying colors. If you're trying to learn a new language, your best course of action will be to learn the most frequently used words in that language. I believe the English language has something like 2.6 million or more words in it, but people don't use all those words. There's only a few words that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're able to understand those words in any language, you can do very well in speaking that language fluently. And another place where this A20 principle comes up in my own life is through these videos I make. I've noticed that most of my views when I share these videos come from Reddit. I used to share a lot of these videos via Facebook, via Instagram, via Pinterest or Pinterest or whatever it's called. And I got barely any views from those avenues. But once I started posting on Reddit, the audience there was a lot more receiving of this. So Reddit is my focus area. So what you need to do is identify what things are most important to guarantee your success and you disregard the rest. Now Gary talks about going a step deeper into this and using the 80-20 on the 80-20. So kind of doing a double take so that you can go down to your most important priority task, which is your one thing. So start, for example, if you were to start with a list of 25, you would go down to five, and then you go down to one, using the 80-20 principle twice. So make sure you understand that concept and use it to your advantage. Now the third big insight is the illusion of willpower being on will control. Basically, Gary's explaining how us as humans tend to get in a state of ego depletion. For subscribers, you probably know what ego depletion is. For new subscribers, I'll explain it to you. Ego depletion is when our willpower gets used up throughout the day. It basically is saying that we don't have unlimited willpower, something you probably would have noticed, but that our willpower is a finite resource. As we do difficult things throughout the day, we lose willpower. We use it up. So it is much harder to keep your composure at the end of the day and do the things that you have to do when you have used up all your willpower throughout the day. That's why sometimes we have spikes in our willpower. Sometimes we're able to sit down for three hours and get work done without being disturbed. Whereas some other times, it's hard for us to just sit down for two minutes and get anything done. Willpower is not on will call. Now, Gary goes on to explain some of the reasons that our willpower gets depleted. He has this nice list here that I'll read out. Our willpower gets depleted when we are filtering distractions, resisting temptations, suppressing emotion, restraining aggression, trying to impress others, 
implementing new behaviors, doing something that we don't enjoy, selecting the long term over the short term, and of course taking exams and tests. So these are things that you have to look out for and structure your work around because if you do all these things and then try to do your most productive work and then try to do your one thing, the results are going to be diminished. You're not going to be able to do your best work when you're in the state of ego depletion. So make sure that your willpower reserves are high when you're ready to do your work. And there's many ways of increasing your willpower reserves through taking rests, meditating, eating food, and just generally taking breaks. So that's something to be aware of. Now let's move over to the fourth big insight of this book, and that's the idea of a disciplined life. Many of us, when we think of success, we think about having a great amount of discipline. When we see that person who wakes up at 5 a.m. in the morning to go for their jog, we envy them because we think to ourselves, damn, I wish I could have that kind of discipline. But in reality, success isn't about discipline. Now Gary says, now quote, success is actually a short race. A sprint fueled by discipline just long enough for habit to kick in and take over. End quote. Now, you see, the small thing you have to pay attention to is the habit. You have to have enough discipline to create the necessary habit for success, the necessary habits. If you can last 66 days creating that habit, which is the average amount of time it takes to create a habit, you will be able to reap extraordinary benefits because everything starts going on autopilot and requires way less willpower. Now, this has happened in my life, especially with the gym. I remember when I started lifting weights, it used to take a lot of energy for me to go to the gym. It used to take a lot of willpower. But after three months or so, everything started getting automatic. Now it's just habitual. Now it's just a faculty of the subconscious mind. You just do it. You don't think about it. And when you have good habits that you don't think about, that you do with relatively small amounts of willpower, success is inevitable. It's just going to happen. Think about it. All these athletes like Floyd Mayweather, like Serena Williams, like Tiger Woods, they made it a habit to practice. The average person would struggle doing what they do because they don't have their habits. So when you're looking at it from the outside, it looks like these guys have a lot of discipline. The math guru or the math whiz in your high school class made it a habit to study math. Now for us mere mortals that are not as good at math, it looks like that person has a lot of discipline because they're able to do their homework. When in reality, they had just enough discipline to initiate the habit. This is very important because it gives you the mindset you need to create habits. If you know that if you can just last for the 66 days or however long it takes to create the habit, you will reap extraordinary benefits. You'll be more inclined to keep at it. Most people don't think about this. They think it's going to be hard forever. So when it's hard for a week or two, they give up. Not you. Just remember that it's going to get easier. Just hold in there. Forget about disciplined life. Just use the right amount of discipline to create the habit and you'll be on your way. All right, guys, the fifth big insight is the insight of time blocking. This pretty much says that we need to guard our time. Time is our most precious asset. We need to set aside three to four hours per day to work on our craft. This is what we need to do to reach mastery. They say that mastery takes 10,000 hours. Now, this figure has been known as the 10,000 hour rule. It occurs time and time again in books such as Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, Mastery by George Leonard, and Mastery by Robert Greene. We always get the same message. In order to be great, you need to work on your craft. You need to dedicate yourself. So Gary is recommending we do this for three to four hours every day. No distractions. When you find a quiet place, where people can't interrupt us because we're living in an age of immense distractions where people who are able to focus are going to be awarded as focusing is going to become a rarer and rarer skill. People 
uh, betrayed by their biology. We fall victim to instant gratification. And it's very hard to not click on these little ads, not eat chocolate, not do a lot of all these things that we don't want to do when we need to focus. Our biology is against us. So if you can set aside a period of the day to do your work, you are miles ahead of your competition. So that is time blocking. Now, another thing that Gary talks about is the fallacy of multitasking. When you look at people's resumes, a lot of people are always boasting about how they're good multitaskers. But if you look at the science, people cannot actually multitask at all. All you can do is switch between two tasks. Your brain cannot operate on two things at the exact same time without losing some efficiency in either one of the activities. If I was doing this audio right now at the same time as perhaps you know day trading or playing call of duty something will suffer either the audio or the call of duty you will not be able to work at your optimal level if you're multitasking so don't multitask focus on one thing at a time one domino at a time another thing as well don't let distractions come into your workspace each time you have to deal with the distraction you have to pause from your work and go back to the distraction as we said before because you cannot multitask but the problem is when you get back to your work it's going to take a set amount of time to reach the level that you are at the level of efficiency that you are at in performing it so if you're doing things with distractions something that's supposed to take you maybe an hour can end up taking you two hours something that's supposed to take you two hours can take you three hours and a half it just keeps on going on and it's a big waste of time so don't multitask Don't let yourself get distracted. Set periods of time on your calendar where you dedicate time to your craft so that you can truly become great. Do it! Just do it!